But some of the other things that you can do, uh, because it updates so easily, is take a look at this. And this is essentially the same assembly that, uh, that I just sketched up to begin with. The only difference is I've got a couple of, uh, well, one more feature. I don't know if you can barely see that, but if I dynamically edit this, I've set these up to be kind of like derailleur controllers. And you see how the sprocket now steps in sprocket sizes as a function of the position of the controller. And then the derailleur take up takes up the chain tension appropriately and everything updates accordingly. Well, as you know, with any kind of chain drive, there's no such thing as an in-between sprocket size. Yeah, and so that's why it must be in steps. Now, how did I get this to happen is really your question? <laughs> I did it with a relation. Now, take a look at this. This sketch, let me just edit its definition. This sketch is, is just a bunch of sketch curve. We've got an arc here, we've got a line, another line, and a dimension. Nothing to it. We go to relations, no relations. It's just a sketch. Where the um, sprockets are defined, remember that's a separate sketch in itself. And I'll edit its definition. And it has dimensions for those diameters. <clears throat> if I say, give me a dimension between two known curves, it happily places a dimension. Why wouldn't that be considered over-constrained? Well, because it's two known entities, ProEngineer knows it can't be a, a dimension and adds what's called, or what used to be called, a known dimension, which you can think of as a measurement. It's simply a measurement that can be used in your relations. Take a look at this. When I go to relations now, and they change to their symbolic representation, you see, you probably can't read that, but that says, in, instead of D11, that says KD11. A dimension that can't be directly modified. It gets its definition from existing geometry. So if you're sketching something and you're curious, what is the distance between this and that? If you just add a dimension between this and that, it will add for you a known dimension. And this known dimension will show up when you modify that feature. And so it's kind of like all the time measuring something for you. So what I've done in my relation for this sketch now, is I've taken that known dimension and I've applied an if statement to it. Now first, I set up a couple of variables. I called it f underscore die underscore one, f die two. Front diameter one, front diameter two. Rear diameter one through five. And so these now are the sizes of the sprocket that I'm going to use. And so now it's just a matter of asking ProEngineer to choose them as a function of the known dimension. Okay? So if KD10 is less than 90, then choose this one. Else, choose that one. And if. Pretty straightforward. And then for the rear one, if this known dimension is uh, greater than or equal to this one, else that one, else, 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 all the way down. So that when that known dimension changes, these diameters take on new values. And so it turns out to be pretty straightforward so that I can do something like choose the sprocket in a dynamic way. And so now this will, this will leap from one diameter to the next appropriate diameter, regardless of whatever they are, without me trying to figure out what that um, uh, the relationship could be to that diameter.